Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host, Steph, and if you love tamales, you're gonna love this recipe. Not only is it easy to make, it tastes just as good. And make sure not to skip too far ahead because we're gonna be discussing best fats to use based on your preferences. For this delicious recipe, you'll need three cups of corn, four cups of maseca, half a cup of butter, half a cup of butter shortening, 10 roasted Anaheim peppers, three cups of cheddar, half an onion, eight ounces of queso fresco, one and a half tablespoons of chicken bouillon, one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of baking powder, one cup of milk, and one and one fourth of a cup of water. To your blender, you wanna add your milk, your corn, your onion, sugar, and now we're gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. And as promised, we're gonna be discussing the fats that you can use for this recipe. You can use lard, you can use butter shortening, you can use regular shortening, you can use palm oil, or you can use plain butter, and even better for a lot of you, you can use margarine for this recipe. Don't forget to make it comfortable for your home. Add your butter shortening and your butter. I like the combination of both of these because it gives it the best buttery flavor that you've ever had. And all of these ingredients are room temperature. We're gonna attach our whisk and we're gonna continue to mix until it's nice and whipped. And remember, if your ingredients get stuck, push them out and continue to whip. And after three minutes, we have some really delicious whipped fat. Nice and whipped. Next, you're gonna add your maseca. And for those of you that don't know what maseca is, it's instant corn masa. A lot of you said that it's difficult for you to get a hold of fresh masa, so that's why I chose to go with maseca today. Just for you, because I love you. Add your chicken bouillon or salt if you chose to go with that. Add your paddle attachment and continue to mix on a medium speed for another minute. At this point, you're gonna notice that your mixture looks like a crumble and that's when you're gonna add your corn mixture. I'm gonna add the water to our blender and I'm just gonna shake it up to make sure that we get all our delicious corn out of this blender and into our mixture. Add your baking powder. And now we're gonna continue to mix on a medium speed for another two minutes. Once you've combined all your ingredients, you're gonna add your sliced roasted Anaheim chiles. And if you don't wanna use cheddar, you can use Mexican cheese blend or any kind of melted cheese that you like. I personally love medium cheddar. And now you're gonna mix on a low speed until everything's well combined. That should be about 45 seconds. And boom, done. While our oven preheats at 350 degrees, I'm gonna coat the bottom of our baking dish with melted butter. And with the same butter, I'm gonna coat the sides of our baking dish. Now you're gonna slowly start adding your masa to your baking dish. You know what, I'd like to tell our friends in England, happy Christmas. Happy Christmas, you're so sweet. Happy yes. Christmas to our friends in England. We'll be getting a lot of lovely messages from our friends. We have a lot of friends in England. We do. Specifically in London, if you're watching this, we love you guys. And we're just gonna spread until everything is nice and smooth. In I'm, no way, shape, or form is this traditional tamales. This is not traditional, but it's gonna get those cravings out of the way with less work. And if you want super easy tamales, the whole more traditional, you should try our breakfast tamales. I even show you there how to bake them. And now this part, you can use queso fresco to sprinkle over the top, or you can use more cheddar, whatever cheese makes you the happiest. And me, I just get so happy with cheese, so. The queso fresco is gonna add that nice golden crisp on the top, and when you bite into your piece, you're gonna say, oh, Steph, you were right. And I'm gonna say, I told you, friend. It's the good stuff. <laughs> I should have really bought more Anaheim uh, chilies to roast, but they go by real quick. So uh, luckily I have a little can of Hatch chili handy that's gonna enhance this flavor even more. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top. But if you guys just wanna keep it with the roast Anaheim, um, I would say go with about 15 possibly if you're gonna decorate the top of your casserole. I'm gonna interject, go with Pueblo chilies if you can. Pueblo chilies, I don't know, you guys gotta represent for your green chili, which one is your favorite? And I'm talking to you, New Mexico. 
You gonna let Cloud say that? <laughs> well, I love Pueblo chilies. <laughs> I love me Mexico too. Thank I know I can't. I can't pick. That's why I'm staying out of this. <laughs> Make it comfortable for your home. <laughs> Whatever you have access to at the moment. I still have a lot of my foil that tends to stick to my casserole. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a parchment paper over the top. I'm gonna place a piece of foil and bake at 380 degrees for 50 minutes. If you're in high altitude, you want to add eight minutes to your bake time. And for the last 10 minutes of your baking time, you want to remove the foil to allow all that cheese on the top to crisp up and finalize the cooking process. And boom, done. A beautiful tamal tasting casserole. I suggest you guys wait a good 15 minutes before serving, but since it's you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and serve a nice, delicious slice. I like this recipe because it's like the fresh corn tamales. Your corn stays nice and tender. And I like to add some sour cream and a spicy green salsa. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh. And I hope you love this casserole as much as my family and I do. Please let us know in the comments what you think. And now it's time for you to look away because it can get really dangerous. Mmm. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. I really love how deconstructed this tamal recipe is because when you add that butter at the bottom, it crisps up the sides of your casserole to taste just like a fried tamal. So you guys are gonna be in for it. It's gonna be dangerous for you. So make sure you allow this to rest at least 50 to 20 minutes before you serve it. Mm. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We hope that you enjoyed this recipe and that you're having a lovely holiday season. If you like this recipe, make sure to give us a thumbs up, comment, and tag us on your social media. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.